Hello again, DIY Pool Legends. Today we're going to be talking about bedding and backfill material. Of all the questions that get asked about fiberglass pool installation, asking about what type of bedding material and backfill material has to be right up there with the most popular. So what is bedding material? Bedding is what you put into the excavation after you've dug the pool shape out that you need. You're going to put a layer of bedding material into that excavation and that's what the fiberglass pool shell is going to rest on top of. Depending on your soil type you might need a lot thicker bedding material layer or you might need a thinner layer. It's going to come down to whether you have a lot of clay in your soil or if it's a little bit sandier and a bit more free draining. Rely on the engineering details and also get a soil test. With all of our pools we always send out a supplement that is in addition to the engineering details that lets you know, depending on your soil type, how deep that bedding layer needs to be. And again, with your backfill, um, how much extra backfill you need to use. We also send out a copy of the Australian standards with every one of our kits. So you will have this information in your hands as well. So what does the Australian standards say about the type of materials that we can use for bedding? So first point is point A, non-cohesive. Non-cohesive is a fancy word basically to say that the materials won't clump together. Often cohesive materials will absorb a fair bit of water, they will clump together, and then when it dries out, it goes rock hard. You basically end up with rock hard bundies sitting underneath the floor of your pool. That's not really what you want when you have 20, 30, 40, 50, even up to 70,000 kilos of water pushing down onto your pool floor and to have something rock hard pushing up underneath. Definitely gonna cause you problems. So non-cohesive means that the particles won't stick together and won't turn into clumps. B, porous. Porous means that water will flow through it. So if you have groundwater building up underneath your pool in between say the floor of the fiberglass pool and your bedding layer, the water is going to drain away from the pool. You definitely don't want it to be non-porous because that water will just stay in place and continue to build up and build up without any draining. C, evenly graded. Grading means that if you put your hand into a pile of it and you held it there, you would see that the particles are all roughly the same size. You don't have really big particles and really small particles, which gives you an uneven finish and they also compress at a different rate which means once you start filling the pool up with water it's going to compress unevenly and you're going to have a fair bit more work to do. D readily screedable once you've got the bedding material in you're going to have to even it out to match the fall of your pool so that's what's called screeding and if you have material that isn't very easy to work with imagine dragging a garden rake over boulders versus dragging the same rake over sand, it's very much that. So readily screedable means that it is easy to move into position without causing any problems. And lastly, E, maximum aggregate size of seven mil. Aggregate basically is just a fancy name to say the particles that you're using can't be any bigger than seven mil. A lot of installers will use seven mil material. Some installers will use uh, five mil, five mil stone. Some installers will use finer material like crusher dust, which is five mil and, and under. There's no right or wrong. Um, as long as you stick with these requirements, you will have the right bedding material sitting underneath your pool. What you can see here is five mil stone being unloaded to be used for the bedding layer. There's a fair bit of it with this particular installation because there's a fair bit of clay in the ground, which means the bedding layer needs to be a lot deeper or thicker than if it was a sandy installation, for example. The most important thing is make sure there's somewhere for the trucker to unload it. And if we put our hand into it, you can see it's all roughly the same size. It doesn't clump together and it's definitely going to be free draining. The backfill material, so basically your backfill is what goes around the walls of your pool. So it's going to fill in the gap between the wall of the fiberglass pool shell and the excavation. Main part or the main reason for the backfill, it's going to keep the walls nice and flat. It's going to stop them from bowing in or bowing out and it's holding your pool in place. 
the Australian standards have pretty detailed information about what you can and can't use with a little catch-all at the end, which we'll touch on in a moment. What are the most commonly used backfill materials? Pretty much the ones that you're going to see in a moment. The most important part is that the backfill material needs to be cement stabilised. What that means is once you've washed in the backfill, it's got cement in it, so that cement's going to cure, it's going to go off, and then it's going to basically be very much firmly in place and rock hard. The reason for that is over 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, you're going to have groundwater going past the pool. You don't want the backfill to be getting washed away or to be slumping or to be moving around. So the cement stabilizing part is very, very important. That's what's going to keep it in place for a very long time. So option A is using a pre-mixed cement sand mix. Option B is a pre-mixed cement fine crushed rock. That's often called crusher dust. It's sometimes called cracker dust. Different states call it different things, but at the end of the day, maximum size of seven mil. Option C, cement sand, fairly similar to the option A, but basically you now have a cement sand mix again. It needs to have a maximum crushed particle size of seven mil. All backfill can't be any bigger than seven mil. The ratio of cement is higher. And you can, of course, mix this on site or use a machine to batch it and use those ratios or the information you see there. This is the tricky catch all that I mentioned earlier on. So, option D other materials and methods as approved by a competent person. This is grey, really, really grey. Is it worth trying to use a material that might fall underneath the umbrella of other and approved by a competent person? If you talk to any installer out there, they're going to say no. What's a competent person? Is the other material going to be right? At the end of the day, if you use the wrong bedding or backfill material, you are jeopardizing your structural warranty on your shell. Our shells have 35 year warranties, but are still, if you put in the wrong backfill material and there is a problem in the future, you can potentially void that warranty. It's just not worth taking the risk when option A, B and C are freely available at soil stores and suppliers right around the country. Just give your local supplier a call, let them know what you're doing, let them know that you want either A, B or C and they're going to be able to supply that for you. So for this installation the installer's chosen to go with Crusher Dust for the backfill material. You can get the crusher dust delivered pre-mixed with cement in it, or you can have it just as straight crusher dust. If you're gonna get it pre-mixed, it's nice and convenient. Just make sure that you're definitely going to get all of the backfilling done in the day that it's delivered. If you don't, then the overnight moisture, even with the tarp over the top of it, it's going to start curing that concrete. So you end up with a rock hard pavlova crust on the outside, you end up with rocks and bundies all through your backfield. It's not a lot of fun to go through and start pulling all of that out. So if you think that you won't get it all done in a day, get it delivered to site unstabilized, in other words, no cement in it, and then batch in the cement that you need as you're going stage by stage. So you can see the difference between the two materials. So you've got the bedding material on the left hand side, the five mil stone, it's a lot coarser. And then on the right hand side, you've got the backfill material. As we've touched on, there's no right or wrong. Lots of people use lots of different materials. Some installers prefer a little bit finer material for the backfill, a bit easier to wash underneath steps and bench seats, swim out ledges and the like but there is no right or wrong. Stick to the Australian standards and you'll be absolutely fine. Thanks so much for watching DIY Superstars. All the best with your installation. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Let other people know as well. If you like, that would be absolutely awesome. And all the best with your installation.